Hi, in this video, I'm going to be talking about linear transformation in Kramer's rule. And hopefully, by the end of this video, you'll get a bit of an intuition on why Kramer's rule works. Now, linear transformation is a function which carries elements of vector from one vector space to another new vector space. What does this mean? Let me explain. This equality represents the linear transformation. We have a function a, which, just like any other normal function, is taking in vector x and producing vector v. More accurately, it is transforming vector x into vector v, and this function a is called a transformation matrix. Let me give you an example. I'm going to be using the same example throughout the video so that it's easier. We have our input vector 2 on. A vector is usually written as a column matrix. And then we have our transforming function, which when multiplied with our input vector gives us a new vector that is our output vector 7, 5. Geometrically, it means we took our input vector p, that is 2, 1, and transformed it into this new vector p prime, that is 7, 5. Let me show you how it transforms basis vectors, that is, the unit vectors along the x-axis and the y-axis. You might notice that the unit x vector is transformed into the vector represented by the first column of the transformation matrix, and the unit y vector is transformed into the vector represented by the second column. Geometrically, the transformation is illustrated like this. Now, based on our new transformed basis vectors, we can construct a whole new coordinate system with new axes x prime and y prime. To give you a hint of what I'm doing here, let's take a vector x, y and transform it. Notice that the output vector is this linear combination of the transformed basis vectors. What this tells us is the coordinate xy in the plane after transformation is still xy but with different basis vectors. Instead of ij, it is now i prime and j prime. Here's a more visual way of understanding this. Going back to our previous example, the vector p, which is 2, 1 after transformation, is still 2, 1 but on the new transformed plane. Similarly, you can find the transformed vector of any vector just by knowing its coordinate x, y on the original plane. You just go x times in x prime direction and y times in y prime direction and you get the transformed vector. Now, before we move on to Kramer's rule, let me show you what determinants represent. Suppose you have two vectors 1, 4 and 4, 2. Now put them together to form a matrix. Then you compute its determinant, which in this case turns out to be 14. What this represents is the area of this parallelogram. If, say, we were in three dimensions, the 3 by 3 determinant would represent a volume, and so on for higher dimensions. Now, let's consider the following set of equations. Then, these equations can always be represented in matrix form. Then, according to Kramer's rule, for the given set of equations, the solution is x equals dx by d and y equals dy by d. Where d is the determinant of transformation matrix, dx is d with the first column replaced by 7, 5, and dy is d with the second column replaced by 7, 5. To see what's going on, let's take a look at all the determinants that we're dealing with. First, we have d which represents this area over here. Next determinant is dx, which represents this area. Here, the area dx is completely dependent on x, which might not seem obvious at first. To understand its dependence on x, we compare this area of parallelogram with this area. Let's call it A. So, we know the corresponding vectors constituting to this area. So we have all the determinants and we can write our area A in its determinant form. 
and from geometry we know that dx is equals to a which gives us the value of x as suggested by the Kramer's rule. You can do the same thing for y. Compare this area of parallelogram to this area and let's call it a2. Now we know that the two areas are equal so we can equate them just like before which results to Kramer's rule. So we can conclude that the Kramer's rule is in fact correct for a set of equations with two variables. And I can also confirm to you that it holds true for equations with more than two variables because the determinants dx, dy, dz, dw and so on would only depend upon its corresponding variables. And that is why the Kramer's rule works.